It's Tuesday. Hello everyone. We're a couple minutes early. So I see it's cold and rainy in Texas. Uh, I know several other people who are snowed in. Yes. Wrap up in your PJs. Wrap up in a quilt. Grab something warm to drink. Sit back and enjoy. I have lots of show and tells. Actually, I have 11 show and tells. And guess what? We have zero topics for this evening. And I do have a pretty fun challenge at the end. So if you have to leave early tonight, make sure you catch us on the replay so that you can play along if you want to in this week's challenge. Cold, lots of snow, 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 snow. Oh my goodness. We've had no snow. We had one day of a light dusting of snow that lasted about 30 minutes and that was it so far. Hello everybody. So before we get started tonight, I just want to say uh, or give a quick shout out to uh, Chantel who is sick and I hope you feel better soon. Sherry who is at the dentist office. And she said she was going to be listening with earbuds to our live show while she's at the dentist. <laughs> so hello, Sherry. And Tracy, who just had knee replacement, I hope you're doing well and uh, staying off your knee. And Miss Connie, who slipped on the ice the other day and is recovering from her fall. And uh, whoever else out there who needs a hug and a get well, I'm going to send that out to you before we get started tonight. Yes, did y'all see all the mug rugs this week? That was so much fun. A lot of people played along with that challenge. It was fun to see what you came up with. I saw all kinds of ideas. We're going to see a few of them tonight. A few of you uh, submitted your pictures of your mug rugs to show in tonight's uh, show and tell. So we get to see some of those. Hello everyone. Yes, we are praying for everybody uh, who is recovering from some kind of ailment or dentist appointment. I have mine this coming Friday, so <laughs> yay. <laughs> I'm not coming through. Linda says I'm not coming through. Uh, <clears throat> How's the video working for everybody? Do I need to stop and uh, restart? Let me make sure that I'm on the right internet. I'm on the right internet. Linda, uh, to submit your stuff for the show and tell, if you go to the Creative Crew group, you'll see an announcement, and I have not removed it from the top. So the very first post you'll see on Tuesdays is the announcement and it'll say we're going live tonight. I usually put some kind of colorful background on the back of it so it pops out and then you just post your pictures and whatever information in the comments section and I grab everything from there and put it into our slideshow. Good idea uh, Chantel. Um, Linda, try to go out of the live and come back in and see if that fixes everything. Diana's voice and video are not synced. Uh, a lot of other people say I'm okay. So if you're experiencing an issue with lagging, uh, maybe try to go like close down f Facebook and come back and we're going to Wait just a couple of minutes before we get started so that you can do that and then join us. Hopefully that will fix the issue. Because <laughs> I think, yeah, I'm on the right internet this week. <laughs> so I'm hoping everything is, is okay on my end. Linda, it sounds like you're buffering. So uh, make sure you have all of your other programs closed. And then uh, close down Facebook altogether and then come back and jump back in. So yeah, we're going to wait just a few minutes so that they can do that before we get started. 
it's fixed now. Okay, good. Awesome, it's so great to see everybody. Did y'all see we had uh, 50 some members this week? New members joining in all the time. Uh, a huge thank you to Miss Maureen who uh, helps moderate this group and helps me stay on track and helps me join everyone who uh, asked to join us. Connie, I see your comment. Although my stuff has a delay. So like when I'm talking, it's actually delayed. So <laughs> it's just like three or four seconds before I see your comments after I talk. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. So tonight we have 11 show and tells. We have zero topics for tonight. Oh my goodness, you've been out with broken fourth rib. Oh, all right, we're sending get wells to you too. I see you now, Connie. <laughs> um, so yes, we do have a fun weekly challenge if you wanna play along. Um, what else was I going to say? If you see the little live button in one of these corners here, you're catching us live. So feel free to join in the conversation. Once we get started, I won't be seeing the comments so much. No, no sweet tarts. Uh, Tic Tacs today. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, feel free to join in the conversation in the comments. I always go back and read what everybody typed in, so uh, make sure to tag me if you have a specific question and I've missed it. At the end, we'll come back if we have time to chat, and uh, if you can stick around, that'll be awesome. If, you're happen if you happen to be catching this on the replay, I hope you still comment along. And if you're watching on YouTube, so glad you're here. You can comment down in the comment section and there will be a link in the description box so you can come join us over here on Facebook, the Creative Crew Group. Uh, there are so many helpful members here. We post all kinds of stuff, creative, uh, you name it, I've seen it on our group. And if you have questions, more than likely within a few minutes, you get some kind of response, answers, or someone who leads you in a direction to go. So I love this group. So yes, make sure to check out the link if you do Facebook and you wanna join the Creative Crew group, we'd love to have you over here. Oleta, you have to have a root canal too. <sighs> Mine is on Friday. <laughs> it was supposed to be last week, but uh, he was sick. Diana. Wow. I guess your whole town has been in mourning. That is, that is incredibly sad. We'll be lifting them up in prayer. I'm glad you said that so that we can do that. All right, I think we have given everybody time to jump out and come back in if they needed to do that. Hopefully it fixed any connection issues. And so it is 8.05, let's go ahead and jump over to our show and tell. And so when I do that, y'all, uh, I won't be seeing the comments as much uh, because I get really distracted as if you haven't figured that out yet. So, um, Kathy, uh, I will post this live tomorrow morning, uh, mid-morning on YouTube. It takes some time to upload and process the video, but it's usually up by lunchtime and you just go over to YouTube and type in Lisa Cape and Quilts. If you haven't subscribed, uh, if you've subscribed and you've hit the bell notification, you'll get notified when the video comes up. So. Uh, but if not, you can just go to Lisa Cape and Quilts and it'll be at the top of my videos uh, because it'll be the newest one. Barbara says, I'm still loving my mystery quilt from a few years ago. 
Yes, was that the Hope, Dream, and Love quilt? That's one of my favorites. I love that quilt too. All right, I'm getting distracted. I'm going to go ahead and move the uh, move the screen around. We're going to take a look at all eleven awesome show and tells this evening. And then, if y'all want, because I'm thinking we're going to go through this. Uh, a little bit faster tonight because we have no topics then after we uh, pull up the challenge for this week maybe we can sit and chat if you want Linda I'm glad you're back you got on your phone okay good I'm so glad you're back and my honey is here y'all he's learning how to play the cello <laughs> I think that is so awesome all right, focus, Lisa. Okay, we're going to start with Mrs. D. I thought, I think we started with D last week, too, didn't we? She was the first one to comment this morning. Let's pull up D's show and tell for this evening. I might be wrong about that. Okay, so let's take a look at her quilt. She says, this is the first quilt I've made in 20 years. That right there is exciting to me. Just letting you know, that is so exciting. Lisa gave me some feedback about the dark border and I think it uh, looks great. This is for my granddaughter who turned 18 last week. Uh, there's a picture of pillowcases in the next comment. I'm gonna pull that picture up here in just a minute. I'm not sure if I'll be able to watch live. I have out of state company coming today, but I'll catch the replay if I can. So I'm not sure, I don't know that I've seen her come through in the comments, but uh, Dee, I love your quilt. I love it and I'm so excited that you've picked this back up. It should just be like riding a bike, right? You know, once you learn the basics, then you can go away from it for a long time and look, jump right back into it. Let's take a look at your second picture. This is the one that shows the pillowcase as well. Doesn't that look like a fun quilt? I love the polka dots. That looks like it is so much fun. I'm also noticing the quilting all through your quilt, which is fabulous. Yes. Let's see, did she get her quilt yet? I'm not sure if you've given it to her yet or not, but I'm sure she's gonna love it. <laughs> Just to let you know that border fabric with the swirly circles, I've had my eye on that fabric for quite some time. I think I'm going to get some. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That's a great way to start off our show and tell tonight. Uh, just the fact of knowing that this is your first quilt in 20 years. I'm just so excited for you. That's a lot of fun. Our second show and tell is from Melissa this evening. Okay, so just to let y'all know, Melissa does have a post here on our group page that you can go and follow along. She's posted several other pictures, uh, but she says, I'm up to block six completed in two days. So she's been busy, y'all, two days. To say I'm having fun with this pattern would be an understatement. I'm digging through my scrap bin and using up all the stuff I forgot I had. That's an awesome way to do and use up what you have. I did post all my blocks under another thread, so I won't repeat them all here. So yeah, if you want to see all the rest of her blocks that she's made, this is the Happiness is Homemade quilt. The mystery quilt that we are putting together on Friday. We're sewing together that whole top. The cookies block is one of my favorite blocks of this quilt. Pardon me. I think you're doing a fantastic job, Melissa. 
I've looked at all of your pictures. I love your fabric choices. I love that you're going scrappy with it and using what you have. I think it's fantastic. I'm so glad you shared your pictures with us. And I hope you keep updating us. I hope you're excited for Friday. That video should be a lot of fun. I'm actually working on that tomorrow. <laughs> so yes, that is her cookies block for Happiness is Homemade. I'm glad you shared it with us. Make sure to go check out her post so you can see her other blocks. Next we have Miss Terry who has three pictures for us to see. Let me make this a little bit bigger so that we can read this before I pull it up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so Terry says, Hi everyone, I am nearing the end of my Australia Animal Baby Project. Here are a few pictures of pouches that I've made so far. I have 12 more of the Hanging Green Kangaroo 3D pouches to make, and I will be done for now. Red hanging ones are the uh, Wallaby Night pouches, and the rest on the table are Joey pouches. Love to all. I love that you're doing this, Miss Terry. And I love that you're updating us in this prog in this project. I almost in the evenings and in the mornings, we have a cockatoo. He has a cage downstairs, he has a cage upstairs. At night we bring him upstairs <laughs> and he sleeps in our room. And in the morning, we bring him back downstairs and he joins in all the fun activities downstairs throughout the day. I wonder if he would go in one of these pouches <laughs> as I carry him up and down the stairs. He's a very uh, skittish. He's like a big scaredy cat. And so I wonder if one of these pouches would work. Sorry. That's just how my mind works. <laughs> I see something and start thinking about other ways to use it. Let's see, let's pull up your next picture. So yes, she has been super duper busy. Look at all of these pieces lined up, ready to go. So yes, when you send these out, I'm assuming you send them all to one place, right? And then they divide them up where they need to go. Here's her next picture. She's so organized. <laughs> you are organized. I know that they are going to appreciate all of the work that you've put into this uh, undertaking. And uh, I really admire your willingness to do this. And uh, yes, I love your heart in this project. I'm glad you've been able to update us along the way. I'm hoping that you take a final picture of everything done and you're able to share that as well. Our fourth show and tell for tonight is Miss Janet. Janet has two pictures to share with us this evening. So yes, we're going to include Janet in the get well wishes. Her first picture says, good thing I got this baby quilt top finished before most likely surgery on the partial tear of the ligament between the second fingers. Sewing is put on hold for now. So yes, look at this baby quilt. Isn't that so much fun? I love it to pieces. I love it. So this baby quilt, did you make it for someone in mind or you just wanted to make it? 
Is it going to be a gift? If so, I always think handmade items at baby showers are the hit of the shower. <laughs> so let's take a look at Miss Janet's hand. This is a pity. So this is why she cannot sew for now. So yes, let's add Janet to our prayer list because it looks like she's going to have to have surgery. So please keep us updated. And I know it's tempting to try to meddle with stuff. Try your hardest to not injure yourself anymore before you get it fixed. And keep us updated. I imagine that's very painful. I had surgery on my finger one time. I cut through a tendon and a nerve and I had to have surgery on that and that was not fun. <laughs> so keep us updated Miss Janet. We'll be thinking about you. Next we have Mrs. Debbie. And Debbie has two photos to share with us this evening. So she says, I always look forward to Tuesday evenings. Me too. Here are projects I have finished and working on. The applique farm animals was a class to spiff up on applique skills. That's awesome. The back is the black and white checker fabric. I did a no C binding so I can hang. Always needed. The other are table toppers. The octagon topper is an example for a case class I'm teaching. The other is an experiment. Ooh. I will use on my table until my mom dibs, which she often does. <laughs> is this Monday? I know, right? Because yesterday was a holiday. My, my whole week is already thrown off. The chicken's tail feathers and a top crest. Oh, let me pull up her other picture so that you can see that. So she's working on these two projects, but she's also doing this. Isn't this fabulous? <laughs> she says, uh, the chicken's tail feathers and top crest, the pig and cow's tail, are 3D. Isn't that awesome? Fused on both sides for a little dimension and fun. I would love to see this in person. You know, pictures and videos show a lot, but there's something about seeing something in person that I think you miss something in pictures, you know? This looks like it would go perfectly in my downstairs <laughs> with the colors. I love it so much. So I'm trying to see, I don't see a pattern name. Is this something you created on your own, Debbie? And if you used a pattern, uh, I would love to know what it is. This would be super fun to make. So your mom calls dibs on your projects. <laughs> I think that's awesome. All right, you'll have to keep us updated on your experiments. I'm very fascinated, curious, and I want to follow along in that. So keep us updated. Let us know how it turns out. And we will go to Miss Diane. All right, here comes one of the mug rugs we're gonna share tonight from our challenge. So Diane says, this is my mug rug for our challenge. Since I had a little piece of coffee fabric, I thought it needed some cookies too. I love coffee. Coffee is one of my favorite things. I'm surprised I do not have this fabric. I saw the fabric and I was like, I don't have that. <laughs> I need that. I think it's super cute. I love your mug rug. 
Mug rugs are some of my most favorite projects because you can make them start to finish and it doesn't take forever and you feel like you've gotten something done. I love to use them in between larger projects when I feel like I'm just working and working and not making any progress. I go make a couple mug rugs and then I feel like I've accomplished something and they're so useful. So Miss Diane, how will you use your mug rug? Are you going to use it or are you giving this away? I can see that would have a perfect little place right on my desk. <laughs> I'm glad you shared your challenge with us. So many people played along. I was so happy about that. Did you love making it? I hope you did. All right, we have two different posts from Kathy, so I'm gonna pull up her first one and we'll take a look at that. Lisa says, I saw a lot of coffee related fabrics at Joanne's. I know. <laughs> I wanna go get some. All right, Miss Kathy says, Lisa, you inspired me to start keeping track with a journal of some sort. That is awesome. I think you're going to be so glad, Kathy, that you've started doing this a year from now. It's fun to look back. Uh, for right now, I am printing off a skeleton on cardstock and filling it in bullet, bullet journal style. Jur bullet journals are so much fun. I am getting a dot journal coming up soon and will start using it when this page is full. Here is a glimpse of what works for me. P.S. I keep a big wall calendar by Lang that I keep track of doctor's appointments and specifics surrounding our lives. This is mainly helping me keep track of my time and make the most of my time. Thanks, Lisa, for helping think about trying this. I am loving it. Yes. So, uh, you know, for some reason, on my channel, I have uh, the quilting, how to price your quilt video. And that was made like a year ago. And it had a good number of views on it, but some reason, the last three days, that video has just like skyrocketed. So there was a comment this weekend on that video that said, uh, you know, how do you keep track of your time when working on a quilt? And a journal or a log like what Kathy is showing here is a perfect way to do that. You know, when you s sit down to design your quilt, you know, you look, look, see what time it is. Write it down. When you walk away, write it down and just keep a running log of your time on a project. That's going to help you price your work if you're trying to sell a quilt. Uh, you know, maybe write down... A, the materials that you need to get, you know, maybe you're working on something and you realize you need glue, you realize you need pens, you realize you need new needles for your machine. Keep a log of it. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the store and forgotten something because I didn't, you know, write it down. So yes, I use my journal uh, for everything. They're so helpful. And I will tell you, I said, sometimes and look back at older journals and I see ideas that I wrote down that I've forgotten about that I can now pick back up on. So I think you're going to love keeping a log of your stuff. Let us know when your new journal comes in. <laughs> Kathy also has this fun little creation to share with us tonight. So she says, here is a cute pouch that I made for my daughter. It is lined with uh, vinyl covered fabric. I did myself to make it water resistant. That's smart. I will mail it to her next month. Pattern for this comes with a video that is step-by-step step and is free by uh, So Sweetness. 
This is called persimmon dumpling pouch. So yes, if you want to make this pouch, make sure to go to Sewing Sweetness. She has a YouTube channel and she has tons of videos about bags and evidently the persimmon dumpling pouch is one of the videos that you can find on how to make this bag. One of the things I want to do this year. <laughs> That's on my list in my journal. This looks like it would be like a good introduction to bags. Like I'm making a note of the persimmon dumpling pouch because I'm thinking I could do this. Yours turned out fantastic. I think your daughter's going to love it. This would make such a nice travel bag too, right? Or, you know, when I travel, I bring a watercolor palette and a watercolor brush, put some art supplies in there. I've written down persimmon dumpling pouch. I'm so glad you shared that. <laughs> See, I share ideas with you and then y'all share ideas with me. We're a big sharing family. I'm so glad you posted that. Let's see, that is number eight, yes. I'm losing track of all my stuff. <laughs> I'll leave that on the screen while I take a sip of my Gatorade. Mmm. Amy says she just made 10 of these pouches. Whoa. Wow. Yes, now I want to make some. Thanks for sharing, Kathy. That is now on my to-do list. That just seems to grow after each one of our lives. <laughs> okay, we're going to move to Miss Jane. And she says, I didn't get to making a mug rug, but I did manage to make some napkins. So look at all of her napkins, y'all. All done with a rolled hem on a serger. Sizes were uh, from 16 to 20 inches, depending on the fabric. The fabrics were 100% cotton from the local quilt shop. These would go great in my house as well. The colors, I love them. Yes, I love the black and the gray and the deep, deep reds. Fantastic. I love that you're supporting your local quilt shops as well. Let's see, you have one more photo we can take a look at. A closer up picture of your napkins. I've never made a napkin before. I would love it if you wanted to share, like, write out your instructions on how you did it. I don't have a serger, but I imagine you could do it on a sewing machine too, right? Probably. I would think so. One day I might get a serger. I just don't know that I would use it enough to justify getting one. I don't know. What do y'all think? I love your napkins. Are you keeping them for yourself or did you make them for someone? Barbara says she loves her serger for projects like uh, these napkins. Linda said I made pouches out of candy bags and put the candy back in. Whoa! You have to share pictures of that. Thank you, Miss Jane, for uh, sending in the pictures of your napkins. If you get a chance and you want to share the process of how you made them, we'd love to hear from you. Next, we have Miss Juanita. I'm going to make this bigger so y'all can just check out these napkins for just a minute I 
Okay. Next we have Miss Juanita, who has a mug rug to share with us. And she says, uh, Hi, Lisa. This is my very first mug rug. It's six by five and a half inches, and I made it for my mom. She has dementia, but she always remembers her elephants. Isn't that so fascinating? She says it brings her good luck. I, pr I probably went, went a little overboard, but I love it, and so does mom. Well, that makes it all worth it, doesn't it? Now, I did see, and I don't know that I copy and pasted that, uh, that you cut your elephants out with your brother's scan and cut. Am I right about that? Look at the little stitching around all of the elephants. Isn't that fantastic? I bet your mom does love this. And I love that she, you know, recognizes the elephants and that she knows that. I think that is just so sweet. I have another picture of the mug rug. Hopefully in this picture you can see some of the stitches really well. It looks like you might have used beads for the eye. Fantastic idea. Aw, oh, the little elephants. I want to make some elephant mug rugs. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love that this is your first mug rug. So what did you think? Did you love making them? Will you make more? I'm curious. Oh, you're here. Remember I had problems with it and I got it fixed though. Oh, you had problem. You were the one who had issues with your brother's scan and cut. Is that right? The rollers on your scan and cut. But you got it fixed. Yay. So glad that that was fixed. I have one more picture to share. So here is the mug rug actually being used with all of the elephants. Don't you love that? I love it. Whoop, that picture is covering up your words. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad your mom loves it. I'll have to read back through your comments. Oh, they told you had debris stuck on the rollers. That makes a lot of sense. Because when you posted your uh, issue that the rollers were not moving, I read a lot of websites, and I think I might have posted one in your, in your thread about uh, sometimes people use tape on their mats right where the rollers go which I use tape to tape down all my stuff but since I've seen that post I do not put tape right where the rollers go on my mat now because of that post put tape everywhere else but yes some people were getting tape stuck un up underneath the rollers and jamming up the rollers I love your mug rugs I hope you make some more of them I'm glad you got your machine fixed. Yay, we're getting all kinds of good news tonight. And this is our last show and tell, y'all. Miss Maureen. Look at her mug rug. Isn't that so colorful and purple? My favorite color. She says... My challenge mug rug, I made it with a facing rather than a binding. I love it. Who doesn't love Dresden's, right? And I love that yours have the curvy edges. And I love all the different fabrics in it too. I hope you were excited to make this Maureen. I see you're here. I love it. 
I've had so much fun this past week looking at all of the mug rugs. And uh, I love that y'all have taken time out of your busy weeks to play along in that challenge. And just because, you know, that week is over, if you still want to make some mug rugs and share them, we'd be glad to see them. <laughs> One of the, the fabric does look vintage, doesn't it? Maybe that's why I'm just drawn to it so much, especially like the orange one. The orange fabric just really, I love that so much. Yes, that is all of our show and tells for this evening. I think the last, was it last week and the week before that was so long because we had like two weeks during Christmas and then we had some catching up to do, but it's been so much fun looking at your stuff tonight. It is so much fun. So tonight we have zero topics, so if you have any questions and you want to stick around, I'm thinking we'll have some time and we can chat if you have questions. I'm going to go ahead and move over to this week's challenge and pull that up on the screen. So this week the challenge is to try something new and share pictures of your new adventures on our group. For some of you that could be tatting or crochet or knitting or couching or painting maybe you've never done a binding on your quilts maybe that could be your something new uh, maybe you're new to quilting and you've not ever done any patchwork pottery bead making maybe you've never done paper piecing before clay work Fimo clay, all kinds of stuff. Something that you've never done before. Let's experiment and jump into it this week and share your pictures on our group. I can't wait to see what that's going to be. <laughs> I think for mine, uh, I want to try screen printing. I've never done that. And I got this stuff uh, over the Christmas break to uh, experiment with screen printing. I got a screen and a squeegee and some screen printing ink. And so yes, I think I'm gonna try that this weekend. Ooh, Sandy says upholstery. You want, I have some chairs in my downstairs at my kitchen island that I've been wanting to recover. That's a good idea. Chantel might try paper piecing. Amy says her challenge will be applique. Amy, I think you're going to love applique, but I'm a little partial to applique because it's one of my, my quilts. If you looked at my collection of quilts, you would definitely be able to pick up that applique is one of my preferred quilting methods. <laughs> Jan says, I've never done free motion quilting on a home sewing machine. That's what I'm doing now. That's so exciting. Juanita says, that's a hard challenge. Think about it for a little bit. You know, take a couple days and think about it. Keep us updated. Brenda says, I've been working on something new for a couple of days now, binding watching lots of your videos over and over. My goal is to get it correct. You know what, Brenda? Wow, I put off binding for so many years and my first few bindings were not that pretty. But you know what? Each quilt that I did, they got better and better. If you haven't seen how to glue baste, glue basting your binding makes it so much easier until you really get the hang of doing a binding then, you know, you might be able to put the glue aside, but if you haven't seen that, check it out. 
Lisa says I have an old quilt top that I want to do that with. Need to redo the piecing. It's a grandmother's flower garden. Lisa, have we seen that quilt yet? If not, you're going to have to share pictures. Debbie says I have this stuff to try tatting, but have not tried doing it. Uh, needle tatting is so much fun. And I believe Maureen does tatting. You might want to get with her. Diana says, I finished a new challenge for me this month. I made memory pillows with button shirts with collars. She made nine of them. That's a lot of pillows. Sherry says, I got a koala paper piecing pattern I want to try. Was a fundraiser for Australia. Whoa, that's so awesome. Maybe, Sherry, you can share. I don't know if there's a link for that. If anyone's interested in uh, getting that pattern and helping out that fundraiser. Yeah, Lisa, dig out that quilt. I would love to see it. And you're right, Maureen should do a tatting class with us. I've been looking up ways to do uh, live videos where we can pull in a visitor. So, yeah, if anyone's interested in joining me live one Tuesday evening, send me a private message on Lisa Cape and Quilts and let's talk about it because I've been looking into how to do that. I think that would be fun, like have a visitor. They could be right here, right next to me. Jennifer says, I am learning free motion quilting and a rag quilt for the first time. Yay. Barbara bought items to decoupage some pieces of furniture. Maureen, you are good at tatting. I've seen your bracelets. Jeannie, uh, today's video, I used um, Elmer's uh, glue all. Okay, so when you go to the store, you'll see Elmer's school glue. It looks like it has a chalkboard on the front and it says school glue. And then probably right next to it, it says Elmer's glue all. I go back and forth between the two. Uh, they both have washed out of my quilts every single time. The Elmer's glue all is a little bit stronger. And so I've pretty much switched over from the school glue to the glue all. But you can use either one. They both do the same thing and they both wash out when you're done. Uh, but from what I can tell, in my opinion, I think the glue wall is a little bit stronger. And the t-shirt blocks are a little bit heavier than just normal patchwork. And I think it holds them a little bit better. But that's just me. <laughs> Debbie, you're interested. You're interested in joining me live one night? Is that what you're interested in? Terry says, my challenge will be to stay focused and do one thing at a time <laughs> and finish the one thing. Not multitask everything like I did when I worked. That's, I think that's good. Sometimes I have so much stuff, it's hard to focus on one thing with all of these other things going on. Hello, Luella. I'm so glad you're here. Yes, Linda, look up tatting. There's uh, like shuttle tatting and needle tatting. I've done the needle tatting and it is a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple different ways you could do that. Linda, you can sew, sew right through the glue wall. Uh, remember to dry it with a good hot iron and dry the glue before you bring it to the sewing machine. But once you dry it, 
yes, you can sew through it. It's just like sewing through any of your fusibles like Heat and Bond, uh, Wonder Under. It's just a, it, you can sew right through it. Ah, so great to see y'all. So yes, it looks like y'all already have a lot of ideas for this week's challenge. If I missed yours, it was not on purpose. <laughs> Jeannie says, I'm trying to focus on one thing. But that doesn't last too long. That's why I have to write stuff down. I have to have a to-do list. Because working by myself, it's easy for me to get distracted. And I started keeping a to-do list daily. Especially, you know, working at home. It's easy to get distracted with other things that I have to do in the house. And then half of my work day would be done and I would accomplish very little. So I make a to-do list and I check it through and when I'm done with something, I check it off to make sure that I stay focused. <laughs> what did I make when I tatted? Uh, some of my Christmas ornaments. I don't know that I shared any pictures of those at Christmas time. I made snowflakes, tatted snowflakes but then put them over top of glass bulbs and connected the snowflake tips with thread and beads. So I decorated Christmas ornaments. I've made little doilies, uh, some lace trim. Yeah, those are some of the things that I made, but that was quite some time ago. I'm not quite sure. I would have to sit down and like relearn what the patterns mean because they're all abbreviations like uh, double chain, you know, it's like a crochet pattern. It's its own little language. I'd have to relearn all of that. <laughs> Jana, I did use steam drying the glue because uh, my iron is a couple years old and it's on most of the day at least five days a week and so even on my cotton setting my iron doesn't seem to get quite as hot anymore so i use the steam because it seems like it's even hotter and i just cover everything with a pressing cloth and the steam dries the glue really fast linda uses a dry hot iron I use the steam, maybe because that just helps my iron get uh, hotter. <laughs> Dual lives would be fun to watch, Sherry. You want to do one? <laughs> Barbara is asking how the heat press is doing on the Pelon 44. Need an update before I buy a heat press. And also needing opinions. Well, uh, you know what? I'm a creature of habit, Barbara. I don't know if you saw today's video that posted on YouTube. Uh, it's the sashing on cornerstones on a t-shirt quilt. I used my heat press for the first time uh, with interfacing for that quilt. I like being like 100% real and honest with y'all. I think if I do several quilts with the heat press that I'll get faster with it. But right now I'm a lot faster with my iron. <laughs> my heat press is 15 by 15 inches and I was cutting a 15 by 15 inch block. So there were areas of my interfacing when I pressed my shirt that when I cut out my block, part of the interfacing wasn't fused down. 
which I could bring back to the heat press and redo. I could do that. But uh, yeah, maybe I'll get faster <laughs> as I work with it more. You know, it, I'm, it's hard to give an, a real good opinion on something that I've only used for one quilt. It really did fuse down the interfacing. That worked well. Uh, but I'm just cumbersome with it. And uh, I think I would have gotten done a lot faster if I was using my iron. That's just me. <laughs> but, you know, to be really honest, that's not the main reason I got the heat press. I got it so that I could do, like, vinyl work and add uh, my own creations into t-shirt quilts. Not so much to fuse the interfacing on the back, but I did use it for this whole quilt. And uh, I have mixed feelings about it at this point. I'll update you after next quilt. <laughs> uh, Sandy, yes. If you're glue basting your seams, you, um, you could open your seams, but it's a pain in the tootie to do that. And uh, so I press my seams to the left or the right. Um, and I like to nest my seams anyway, especially with a t-shirt quilt. And, uh, so yes, I either press them to the left or to the right. Um, you could open them up flat, but it's a pain. <laughs> what quilt beginners? Jacqueline, can you, uh, re-ask your question? Cause I'm not quite sure, uh, what you're asking but I'd love to help Linda wants to learn how to make clothesline baskets hmm so when can you do a YouTube on it on my heat press well I showed how I used it in today's video although it was a pretty short segment of that video I tried to keep that video as short as possible uh, but once I get more familiar with the heat press, maybe I'll do a video all about the heat press. I did share in today's video the settings that I used for the Pellon. Again, that might vary. I think anytime you're sharing settings with anything, that you really should experiment with your own uh, equipment as well. But I did share my settings that I used. Connie has a question. When making a table runner, she wants a big border. Do I put batting in the border? And can I do all of this by making a tube with my back and front? I want straight ends, not the pointed end. Any ideas, everybody, that you can share with Connie? Brenda says, have you thought about a professional iron? I've seen them. Um, but no, I've never thought about that. I did see a video last week of someone using one. They're much bigger than my heat press. Kitty wants to know, when can we expect a video on Inkscape? Uh, probably not until this weekend, Miss Kitty, because... Uh, I had to get that client quilt done. You can see it right there. I'm putting the binding on that tomorrow. And then we're putting together um, the mystery quilt top. And I have to do that and get that video done by Friday. So if there's time, uh, I do know that the next video, I'm going to walk you step by step and show you exactly how I made my logo. So that uh, we do all of the tools that we've used in previous videos like uh, union and difference and text and putting words on a path we're going to combine all of that and I'm going to make my logo along with you so that you can do it with me and then you can make your own you know create your own Uh, Janie, for a pressing cloth, I use an old sheet that I found at the Goodwill, <laughs> and then you can cut it to any size that you want. 
And uh, so I've made several pressing cloths from half of a sheet. I still have half of a sheet left. And uh, that'll probably go on the back of an art quilt. <laughs> Hello, Miss Juana. I have family that lives out of state and are making a blanket for a new baby they are expecting. Aww. Linda asked, I did t-shirts with a heat press and was wondering if you used a cover sheet on top of your blocks. I did. So I laid down a Teflon sheet first. Then I laid my Pellon down with the bumpy adhesive side facing up. And then I laid my t-shirt uh, down on top of that with the logo facing up. And then I used a Teflon sheet on top of that absolutely no problems with any of that and all of my logos stayed perfect uh, but I have a hard time just trying to get the logo on the plate you know I was doing a lot of bumbling around just trying to get it on there on the plate right and <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm with Terry and Ella. I would bring the, the batting all the way through the borders. Thank you, Miss Connie. No, I'm sorry. I'm reading through the comments, Ella, uh, just to make sure that I don't miss anything. Uh, while we're live and so yeah I'm gonna look like I'm frozen up for a second but I'm just trying to read the comments Juana says they want me to embroider a name for them to add but I don't know what to do it on to make it easy to add if anybody has any ideas for Awana that you want to share. Alexa says, one of my try something new was making sourdough starter from scratch. Whoa, that's awesome. Sue asks, what is the name of the fabric glue that you use? Well, um, if you want a permanent fabric glue that is clear that you can sew through when it's dry, I like using Fabri-Tac. Uh, you can find that, I believe, at Walmart. You can find it at Joann's. I believe you can find it at Michael's, too. And I know that you can get it on Amazon because that's where I order it now. If I'm doing uh, using glue for glue basting, like with my binding or my quilt blocks, then I use uh, Elmer's School Glue or Elmer's Glue All, and uh, those wash out. They're not permanent, but they just help keep your pieces lined up and perfect while you're sewing, and then they wash out. But the Fabri-Tac glue is permanent and clear and fantastic.
I made bowl cozies for the first time as something new. Yay! All right, y'all, I could probably sit here all night and read your comments. And then it just looks like I'm frozen for <laughs> minutes upon minutes. So yes, it looks like y'all already have lots of plans for uh, the challenge this week. Let's see, I'm making my first t-shirt quilt and was wondering if I can use regular quilters cotton for the binding and backing with a light weight batting. I live in Phoenix, so I don't really want a minky. Yes, cotton, you can use cotton. So you don't want a minky or a flannel. Yes, on this quilt, I have a cotton backing. I'll be using a cotton binding, and it has an 80-20 very low loft batting in that quilt, and it's fantastic, so. So yes, uh, yeah, I think my new thing will be uh, experimenting with uh, screen printing. Has anyone ever done that before we go? If you have, I would love to chat with you sometime before this weekend. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a live on my Lisa Cape and Quilts page once I figure it all out. But my idea is to design some cute little design and then cut it out in vinyl on my brother's scan and cut and then put it on my screen printing frame and then I can just print off several of one you know the same design on several pieces of fabric I think that would be so much fun and then I could use my heat press to set the inks right that's really one of the reasons why I got the heat press or why I wanted it was to do stuff like that. Connie says, please, I got all night. You want to stay and chat for a little bit? <laughs> no, I do not use, uh, I did not add any interfacing to my sashing or my cornerstones for this quilt and um, yeah no it works perfectly I don't usually like my collage style quilts uh, when I add blocks of quilters cotton or whatever uh, if it's regular like I'd make a patchwork block out of it I don't use interfacing on it I only use interfacing on clothing items so, yeah, save the interfacing, and uh, you can do it without it. <clears throat> Juanita, I did not make my own frame. However, I've watched hundreds of videos, and I have seen and collected a list of things to make my own because evidently it's way cheaper uh, just using old frames, like picture frames, and the sheer, like, window curtain fabric. Yeah. I think it's way cheaper to make your own, but the frame that I bought was a speedball frame from Amazon and you can reuse them. So that's good. <laughs> good night, Chantel. I hope you're feeling better. Sherry, are you still at the dentist? <laughs> Just gonna go back and see if I missed anything, which I probably did. If you have a question and I missed it, now's a good time to go ahead and post it before we go. Because if I missed your question, I certainly didn't mean to. Sherry, you're still at the dentist. And I have a Nolting Pro Series 24. 
uh, Nolting, you can go to Nolting.com on the internet and check them out. Fantastic company. Um, I get to actually talk with the owner during the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival. He is usually there. And, um, yes, the one time I've ever had a problem with this machine was because I broke it myself. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, they sent me the part and then they stayed on the phone with Harlan and walked us through it. I was down one day. No, I'm sorry, three days because we waited for the part. But when we got the part that day, we were able to fix it. So I won't do that again. They're awesome. The machine quilts through denim and t-shirts and thick batting. I make some heavy duty memory quilts with heavy clothes, sweaters, quilts right through it. It's a Nolting Pro Series 24. They have larger ones and they have smaller ones like the Fun Quilter. Um, but yeah, they came and uh, let's see, Memory Lane Quilting was the actual shop that I bought it through. They're the ones who had the booth at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival, but the owner of Nolting was there. And so, yeah, Memory Lane came to my house and set up the frame and gave me a little lesson, and then I was off. Yeah, I should do more videos on it. I do have some videos, but I'd really like to do some, like, basic videos, like how do you thread a Nolting? How do you wind a bobbin for it? There are videos out there for that stuff, though. Oh, yeah, Maureen posted this post. Uh, APQS is having a long arm giveaway. Go check out her post. They make some awesome machines, too. I think, let's see if I'm remembering right, the videos I have about my nolting is I show how to load a quilt on it. I show how you can put your binding on your quilt with a long arm. That saves a lot of time. You can see that video. It's an older video, so it's probably like four hours long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I do have those videos on there. Juanita says, okay, I got it. I think I'm going to make some long curtains that my brother has been after me to make for him. That would be my challenge because I've never made any. Me neither. The curtains will go for his living room. That's a good thing to, ch to do this week. You'll not only be doing the challenge, but you'll be writing something off your to-do list. <laughs> Yeah, Ella, go check out Maureen's post about that giveaway. Connie, that's a good idea. Going over sizes of needles for sewing. Um, in one of my t-shirt quilt series, I show some of the needles that I use for that, but there's so many other kinds of needles to use for other projects. But I'm going to be really honest with you, Connie. I use like four different kinds of needles. Like um, universal. <laughs> They're good for everything. And embroidery needles. And then the denim needles. The really thick, heavy-duty needles. Between those three kinds of needles... That pretty much sums up my needle collection when it comes to my sewing machine. <laughs> yes, Darlene, you can add your binding with the long arm. It saves so much time. I have a video and I show how I how you can do it. I did not do it with this quilt. Uh, but yes, it saves a ton of time. And you just add it you, as you're quilting. You add your binding along the edge and you advance the quilt, quilt the quilt, add your binding on both sides and you just work your way all the way through. So when you take your quilt off of the frame, all you have left to do is to pull the binding over to the back and sew it down. <laughs> Thank you, 
Thank you, Cynthia. Maureen says she's going to win the long arm. <laughs> I hope you do. I hope somebody I know wins it. Bye, Miss Lisa. It's been fun talking with you, too. I hope you have an awesome night. Yeah, darling, go check out that video. Like I said, it's probably like a four-hour long video because back then, I wasn't that great. I'm still working on editing my videos and trying to get them shorter, but yeah, my videos back then were pretty long. Yeah, there's a lot of different kind of needles out there. I'm really basic though, like universal needles in size 12, 14, and 16, uh, maybe a ballpoint needle and a denim needle. They call them denim needles or jeans needles. And then different size embroidery needles. Those are my main three kinds of needles that I have. <laughs> Is the post on the Creative Crew Facebook? Yes, uh, the long arm post Maureen posted. Check out, your, I think you have to scroll through several different posts. But I think that's where Maureen posted about the APQS long arm. Good night, Mary. I hope you have a good night. Connie, you could get a she shed. That's what I started my business in. You could put it right out there. It would fit. comprehensive videos are you saying my longer videos were comprehensive <laughs> they were either comprehensive or repetitive because I like to say the same thing over and over again <laughs> in case you didn't get it the first or second or third time I'll say it one more time All right, y'all. Have you ever embroidered on a ball hat? No. I don't have, uh, evidently you can put a hat on a regular hoop and embroider on it, but I think it would probably be easier if you had a hoop that hoops hats, and I don't have one of those. And the hoops for my Bernina embroider machine cost an arm and a leg so I don't ever see myself getting a hoop for the hats but I think there's a way you can hoop a hat in a regular frame but I've never done that kitty says I heard you say this morning you set your machine to sew a quarter inch does your machine have that? Or are you talking about your foot? Okay, so your, uh, a lot of sewing machines come with a quarter inch foot. If you have a singer and it didn't come with that, Joann's has a foot that they call a quarter inch pressing foot. So check that out. But my sewing machine, the Juki also, one of the reasons why I love this machine is it has a little button that you can push and the needle automatically dink, goes over to a quarter inch and I'm ready to start piecing my blocks together. But if you don't have that and you don't have a quarter inch pressing foot, what you can do is take yourself a piece of paper and use the raw edge of your paper and take a ruler and measure over a quarter of an inch. And draw a thin line and then line up the raw edge with whatever presser foot you are using raw edge of your paper to the very edge of your presser foot and move your needle over until it lowers right on that line take yourself some tape like painters tape or something and mark the bed of your machine and that is your quarter inch uh, yeah your quarter inch 
seam allowance. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Jan. Harlan Capen, your cello does not count for the challenge because you started learning your cello last week. We're just starting this week's challenge today. Today is Tuesday. You started with your cello several days ago, so no, that doesn't count. And if you want to play along in this challenge, then you need to pick up something new. Juanita says, I have a question for the scan and cut. Which embroidery machine do you recommend? I have the canvas snap, scan and cut, and I want a good embroidery machine. Miss Juanita, all I have experience with when it comes to embroidery machines is my Bernina. I have a love-hate relationship with that machine. Some days I love her. Some days I cannot stand that machine. That's my honest opinion about it. And she was a pricey little machine. And for me to not always love her. Hmm. Uh, so asking me, all the only experience I have is with that machine. It's a Bernina B700. Granted, it might just be the machine. <laughs> You know, sometimes you get a machine that has a persnickety attitude. But uh, I haven't ever used any other embroidery machines, and so I don't have any experience where I could say, you know, I used this one and I really loved it. So what I would say is to post this question on our group because I think you'll get lots of feedback because I know a lot of us have embroidery machines that can give you some really great feedback on them and maybe give you a, a good direction to go in uh, and help you more than I can because my experience is very limited to just that one machine and half the time I don't like her. <laughs> she does wonderful embroidery, but her attitude stinks. Hello, Gina. She made a dress today. Harlan, you can just take your sad faces and go carry on and find something new to do for your challenge. Maureen, you do not count his cello as part of this challenge. Anne says, I'm doing jelly printing now. It's so cool painting off, right? Maybe that's something you could do new this week. Belle says she loves brother machines. You know, okay, so when I bought my Bernina, I was looking at the brother dream machine. Yes. But we ended up getting a Bernina. Beverly, if you leave and come back, the sound might come back. Cynthia says baby locker brother for the embroider machine. Jan says, I just found out brother and baby lock is one and the same. You know, that's the same way with a lot of machines. They use the same bodies, sometimes even the same mechanics, and then just change a feature or something. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. Melissa says, can I count my applique blocks for the happiness quilt? They are definitely a new thing to me. <laughs> oh, that's a great area. Melissa, technically, 
you started them and you were learning applique before today. Maybe if there's a new technique, maybe a new stitch, like if you've been using a zigzag stitch for your applique, try a satin stitch and that can be your new thing using your mystery quilt blocks. Karen, do not encourage him. He cannot use his cello as his new thing. It's not new. It was new last week. Connie says, I have a brother and named him Bessie. I get made, I get mad at her, but it's always me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's always me with this Bernina. I'm going to just be really honest with you. I cannot cut him some slack, y'all. You know, let's see, today's Tuesday, the 21st. He got his cello last weekend. Before today. Sergeant Lisa, yeah. Let Harlan play for us. Do y'all want to hear Harlan play the cello? I don't know that he's still watching. He might have... Oh. He's still watching. Harlan, if you're brave enough, you've got two minutes to bring your cello and your butt in here and play something. And if you don't show up, then I'll do a video on my personal page maybe sometime this week. That's interesting, Juanita. I have also heard that when Joanne and Walmart sell Brothers, they sell machines that are built with plastic hardware. But if you buy it from, here he comes, y'all. But if you buy it from Brother, you get steel hardware. That's interesting. Mom is learning her piano. But Mom, you can't count that as something new. All right, here he comes, y'all. You know this is going on YouTube tomorrow, right? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right, just make it sure. <laughs> Prepare yourselves for greatness. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, one caveat. I've never touched one of these before Saturday. Yeah, Saturday he bought a cello. Never touched one before. Gotta, Spur of the moment. I tighten up my bow. Hold on, let me turn this on the big full screen. There we go. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on. All right, there. Now y'all can see them. <laughs> and now I got to remember how to play. <laughs> Oh, hold on, hold on. They said they can't see you. They can't Scoot see over. Me. Oh, is oh, that? Oh, maybe they can see you now. Can they see me now? Nope. Scoot oh. back over this way. There you go. All right. There we go. All right. Can they see me now? Yeah. All right. I got to back up a little bit so I don't hate your chair. Okay. No pressure. This is my first live day. His first <laughs> performance. His first performance. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Let me try one. Here we go. One Start more time. over. One more try. Now that's that. There we go.
keep going. My string went out of tune or something. <laughs> Just keep going through it. All push right. through it. All right, I'll push through it. Here we go. All Last right. try. Last try. He's out of tune, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the pressure, too, yeah. but I think you did good. Yeah. And I think he just got his cello Saturday. So in just a few short days, he's already playing Amazing Grace. Yeah. So, yes, that's Amazing Grace. Well, kind of. <laughs> I'll make a video sometime this week and... uh when he can play it all the way through. Everybody said you did awesome, Harlan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know, it's not the string, it was me. I got so it's not tuner. out of tune. Yeah, I got my tuner, so maybe. Let me try one more time. All right, then. you got one more time. All right. All right. Let me tighten up my bow. I, maybe that's this is how our nights have gone. <laughs> <laughs> After, it's just in Saturday, so thank you for playing for everybody. Are you coming back? Yeah. He's coming back. Oh, go. yeah. <laughs> go on. <laughs> All right, y'all. It's been so much fun. I'm glad, you know, it was kind of nice. We had a shorter week this week, and we've been able to hang out and chat at the end, answer a lot of questions. And hopefully um, you got some feedback about, you know, your questions with our chat tonight, too, about machines and all that stuff. It's been so much fun. I could probably sit here and talk with y'all all night. But I'm going to go ahead and go. I have to get up early and bind a quilt in the morning. And uh, record a video for Happiness is Homemade. And try to fit in an Inkscape video. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to try really hard. Okay, Kitty? I hope you all have an awesome night. I hope everyone who is dealing with some kind of ailment, we're all praying for you. Feel better. And uh, anyone working on projects or the challenge this week, don't forget to share your pictures. I love you guys. It's been so much fun. Can't wait to see you next week. Good night, everybody.